is the most powerful sport on earth, the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Auto City Speedway in Flint, Michigan. I'm Butch Krieger along with Army Armstrong and we're ready to go here this evening with the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. There's the defending national champion Rod Litzow as USA number one Chevrolet. Dennis Anderson chasing those Renegade points in the world famous Grave Digger Chevrolet machine. And the most ultimate tricks monster truck in the United States today, Scott Stevens and King Crunch. They're all lined up here this weekend in Flint, Michigan, chasing those world championship points coming down to the end. There's Johnny K, John Kwasniewski, one of the premier rookies on the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge, coming off of one of his first wins at Fisherville, Virginia. Army spent some time earlier today with John. John, a lot of people said it was a fluke win, was it? No, it wasn't a fluke win, Army. I've been chasing these, all the good trucks for the whole season so far, and, and finally we made some major changes on the truck halfway through the season. I think we're going to, it's hooking up perfect now. A lot of research and development, looking good. you got to be tickled to death in your rookie year. So far, we're coming out better than we expected so far this year. We had some major problems here during the beginning of the season, but we're getting them worked out. So if these guys are going to be serious, they're going to have to get past you tonight? Yeah, I think they will have to. Thanks, Army. John Kwasniewski and the Buffalo Trimmer try to make it two wins in a row on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. But standing in his way are the points leaders, the Equalizer and the Carolina Crusher. It's all coming up in just a moment when the first round action gets underway here at Flint, Michigan. Power Tracks and the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge is brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevy Trucks. Welcome to ESPN's Fire Tracks from Auto City Speedway in Flint, Michigan. We're ready for the first round action here on the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. It's a cold and windy night here in Flint, Michigan. The trees bending over backwards here tonight. Let me how about it? Look, I tell you what, the weather may be cold and windy. It's the last outdoor race of the year. All these guys have got these monster trucks on kill. The action is going to be red hot right here in Flint. And look who's coming up to the starting line right now, the defending national champion, Rod Litzow. Well, Rod Litzow is going to get a first round bye by virtue of a quick qualifying shot. Remember, he's going to be running with an injured right hand. On the screen, it comes up showing the pairings in the first round. He'll get the bye. Then it's Nightlife, Dave Wyzorg up against Bobby Breen and Wild Hair. That's going to be a good run. Then we come with the Georgia, the long wheel by Clydesdale going against the No Problem Ford. That's going to be a heads up battle. Then the current point leader, David Morris, up again, starving Marvin Smith and Stomper out of Arnold, Missouri. Both those going to be Chevrolet. Speaking of Chevrolet, number two international point chase, Carolina Crusher goes against Jesse Berkey's Auto Smart Stores playing for Keith. And the Mopar Magic of Gary Wiggins up against Johnny Breen and Mad Dog out of Missouri. Texas, all the way from Texas, the Keen Crunch GMC of Scott Stevens goes against last week's winner, the rookie, the Buffalo Trimmer, Johnny K. And everybody's favorite, Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger up against Mike Wine and the Jersey Outlaw. We asked Rod Litzow about the decision to get him back in the driver's seat after sitting out for a couple of weeks with a hand injury. When the truck came back in the shop after not so good to two weeks without you as driver, what went through the discussion at the round table of the Monday morning meeting when they decided to put you back in that truck? Well, what basically happened is, you know, we're, we did have some bad luck and we looked back at the season and we made a few bad choices during the season, which hurt us, you know, and all we're going to do right now is we're coming out here doing our best, showing what we can do. We're winning, but we have fallen that far behind that it's going to make it really hard to take it. So we're looking realistic at it. We're just going to push for what we can. If somebody else has bad luck, then I'll get the jump on them. So our first side-by-side -side competition coming to the starting line. It's Dave Wise, Oregon Nightlife, up against Johnny Green and the Wild Hair. Now, John Green normally drives the Mad Dog truck. He's not going to be driving that truck this evening. They've got a new driver. He steps over into this one. But, Butch, this is what it's all about. First round pairing. Nebraska going against Missouri Chevrolet is a pair. Out of the gate they go, and the Nightlife gets a little bit of a hole shot on the Wild Hair, and he's on his way. Boy, Dave Wise, working the right lane to perfection. 
advances to the next round. So he's got to be happy with that first round win because he picks up those valuable points here in the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Let's go down to Army with a word from Dave. What's giving a truck such a weird bounce at the finish line? Well, the cars are pretty rough. They've got some pretty good holes in them. And what we're doing is getting a second bounce and it's throwing us up and then we're bouncing again before we got to come on the brakes. And our next pair rolling to the starting line, here's Dave Morris and the Equalizer out of Springfield, Tennessee, the current point leader. Butch's kid's been a rookie sensation, your current national point leader, but who does he draw? None other than Starvin. Marvin Smith in the Stopper Chevrolet out of Arnold, Missouri, and Smith in this Stopper Chevrolet is hungry. All year long, he has yet to take a win. But everybody knows me is I don't like to lose. I, I, I can take losing, but I don't like it. You know, I'd, I'd rather be in the top five. And uh, if there's anything I can do about it, I'll be in the top five or the top three. But, you know, top ten ain't bad. Back on the starting line. We're ready for that action between Stomper and the Equalizer. And out of the gate we go. Oh, oh look, we've got a problem. Looks like Stomper lost the transmission right on the starting line. So Dave Morris continues on down the track in the Equalizer, and he will advance to the next round. Let's go down to Dave and Harmy at the finish line. What did the run feel like to you? That run felt real well. Uh, I hope I can make the rest of them just like it, but with more speed. What, what's the deal with coming off the first set of cars? You seem to be having some problems with that, getting lined up for that second set. I don't know if I'm getting on it too hard when I'm landing in the cars coming off of them or what. I'm going to try to figure that out, though. And next round action coming. It will be none other than Jesse Burgey. And the play-in for Keith Chevrolet out of Wyoming, Michigan, as he comes up against the number two man of the points right now, Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher out of Waysville, North Carolina. Porter runs out of the sponsorship of the Big A Auto Parts Store, setting on his right, the Auto Value Auto Parts Store for the Battle of the Parts Store. Who's going to take the win? One out of North Carolina. Look at Burgey trying to make a move out of Michigan, close to the camera. brings it to a stop, Jesse Berge out of Michigan. He seems okay. And look, Army Crusher going back to the pits. He's got a problem. I don't know what it is. We'll check and let you know a little bit later. We'll return for more first round action on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Welcome back to Fire Tracks here on ESPN. We're at the Auto City Speedway in Flint, Michigan, the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Rolling to the starting line, Mr. Gary Wiggins in the full bar magic machine. He comes up against Mad Dog out of Jefferson City, Missouri with a substitute driver. How about it, Army? Kurt Fisher's going to be driving Mad Dog. First time in a monster truck. Now, Kurt is a national champion in the sport of mud bog racing. I had the pleasure of working with him there. But this is a whole brand new ball game. Believe me, the Mopar Magic. Good on the right side, Fisher having a problem. Gary Wiggins goes to the next round. Something important here. All the winners so far have come out of the same lane, haven't they, Butch? That's right. It's been a right lane win every time so far here tonight. As looks, we see Gogo -Go going over, checking out the competition, make sure everything is okay on our cold and windy night here in Flint, Michigan. Back on the starting line, we've got Johnny K and the Buffalo Trimmer coming to the starting line. He'll be up against Mr. Scott Stevens in the King Crunch Machine out of Texas. Scott Stevens teams up with the Automator people to go with one of the new onboard computers, and it has given him nothing but good stuff. Ever since he put the computer in the truck, he's been running like a bandit. He goes up against the kid at one last week. Look at this Texas truck, the GMC. Oh, he's trying to hold off. Let's get out of New York. No. I don't believe he did it. I do not believe this. He passed him at the finish line in the air, Butch. And the timing camera replay shows you your winner. It is Johnny K and the Buffalo Tremor. Let's go down to Army with Johnny right now. I'm trying to stick with the same driving style that I did with last week. I, that's what I was getting confused with was the driving style. We were trying to change so many different times, trying something different. I think we finally got it down now where I'm just consistent with the same driving style. Well, one of the main rules of motorsports is you only change one thing at a time. That's what you're doing now? That's what we're doing, one thing at a time. And right now, I think we don't have to change anything anymore. I think we got it right now. Rolling to the starting line of one of America's favorite trucks, it's Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Well, you know, you said it's a favorite. It definitely is for the Wild Bunch. But look who he goes up against. If you're a Ford fan, you're going to pull for the Jersey Outlaw and the rookie sensation, Mike White. The red lights on the Grave Digger says everything is 100%. 
Michigan. Again, out of the same lane. None of the drivers are referred to the lanes, but it's going to be a player, but another right lane winner, Dennis Anderson. Let's go down to Army with Dennis. Right now, we're kind of a unique situation. Dennis Anderson, it's the second round you won. You didn't break anything. I know it. That's, well, that's what I'm trying to do is hang in here tonight. I'm coming off the line kind of easy because that's what you got to do on this track. You know, we, we're launching real hard off the line. If you launch, you get too much air and you're going to break something. So I'm going to try to hang in there. You feel confident you can win this thing? It's been a long time since you've been in a winner's circle. Yeah, it has. This is. I feel like this is going to be my night. I hope it is anyway. I need a win. Back on the starting line. The next two in the pair to come up, and it will be Bennett Clark and his Chevrolet machine out of Georgia. The Mike Hardy prepared Chevrolet engine sounding super good as he comes up against Johnny Moore. Johnny Moore out of Tennessee. He'll run a 460 cubic inch supercharged Ford engine. The old classic battle of Butch Gregor, Ford versus Chevrolet. Who's going to the next round and keep an eye on the lane? Out of the gate we go. It's Chevrolet and Ford against each other, and Chevrolet now taking the lead. Time as he advances to the next round. Well, I'm going to check and find out if he mentions anything about the lane. So far, nobody said anything, but it has been a major factor in this competition. Everybody has been winning in the right lane. Let's go down to Bennett Clark and Army. We've given it all we had on the outdoor course here, so I'm going to. Uh, I can come across the first set of cars. The truck's laying down good. The truck's pulling real hard. The motor man's worked pretty hard on the truck, and. Uh, all the other sponsors, uh, North Georgia Four Wheel Performance, they helped me a lot in the last few weeks, and we really got the truck moving right now. Well, North Georgia must have done a good job because in between jumps, the truck is really settling. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, it's made a lot of difference. We've uh, changed some uh, springs, we've changed some shocks. Everything seems to be working real well on the truck right now. Thanks, Army. The sport of monster truck racing is still being invented. After all, it's really only about three years old, and already there is one bunch of technology involved. But when the Equalizer came out with this new revolutionary suspension this year, and it continued to win, it was a sure sign of more things to come. Army tells us about it. The handling characteristics of a monster truck are determined by two basic pieces of suspension, one of them being the spring, the other one being the shock absorber, and we're going to talk about those right now. The tried and true setup on springs for monster trucks are what we call leaf springs, very similar to all the automobiles had years ago. The springs are attached two places to the frame and allow the axle assembly to only move in two directions, straight up and straight down. The amount of recoil is determined by the shock absorber. Okay, now we're going to show you what I believe is going to be the future of monster truck suspension. Now this right here is the future we were talking about. The shock serves the same purpose. The big difference is the type of spring they use. This is a coilover spring, very similar to the spring you and I have in our everyday automobile now. What the coilover spring allows the vehicle to do is each wheel and tire combination work more independently of the other, because there's only one pivot point on a coilover spring. This allows the monster trucks to settle, if you will, on the track quicker, thus the driver can put the horsepower to use quicker and go faster. This is the Equalizer, your current national points leader, the only truck that's running this kind of suspension. I predict next year you're going to be seeing a lot of coilover trucks on the Monster Truck Challenge Series. Thanks, Army. When we come back from this commercial break, it's the quarterfinal round of racing on a cold and windy night at the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. Stay with us. Welcome back to Fire Tracks here on ESPN. It's quarterfinal action from the Auto City Speedway in Flint, Michigan. Boy, but you talk about action. This next round is kind of interesting, and I tell you why. I was wondering who is going to be working the right lane. All the quick guys are going over to that side. USA one quick qualifier pushes the night line to the left lane. Litzow says he's going to pull the trigger literally on that USA one truck. Use the right lane to his advantage. Look at the front super. Out of the gate he goes. He's on his way. Racing. There's Army Armstrong helping get Rod Litzow out of the machine there at the far end of the track. Rod visibly shaken by this accident. The crews of the other monster trucks coming over to check out on Rod Litzow. There's the owner, Everett Jasmine. Let's take a look at it again as he 
comes off. The car's a real bad bounce. The truck goes over first on its nose, then side over side, back again, back on the tail of the truck, and back on its top. What a violent crash that we have had here at the Auto City Speedway. Rod Litzow visibly shaken. He cannot believe it. This is the sixth time that that truck has been over on its top. Here's the ambulance checking things out. Army's trying to get a hold of Everett Jasper to talk to him about Rod Litzow. Everett Jasper, first things first. Is the driver okay? Rod's okay. He's just shook up. No physical damage. What about the truck? It looks like 89 just went down the tubes for you. Looks like we're making a real hard charge for the end of the season here, and it really looks bad right now. I mean, that's not to say we won't be back next week, but it doesn't look real good. What goes through your mind as an owner, Everett? I know you put your heart and soul in this. You've worked so hard to get that, to be that number one truck, and then it's almost like you had a monkey on your back all year long. We have had. We've had a real bad one on our back. It's been a number of things. I've got a lot of complaints about the season, but all in all, we've just had a real tough season. Uh, we've got new trucks already near, near completion. Uh, I plan on coming back and taking the championship again next year. Looks like we probably won't make it this year. Well, we're looking at a site that really, I'm sorry to say, is not uncommon in 1989. Let's out, USA won. What can you say? On his head again. That shows you how tough the competition is for this national championship. They're currently set number three in the points. He had to go for it. This is what happened. And the crowd acknowledging that USA One's driver, Rod Litzow, is okay. We go back to the starting line right now with David Morris and the equalizer up against Bennett Clark and Clydesdale. Well, I'd give a nickel to know what's going through both these drivers' mind after seeing what happened in front of them, but back to the business at hand, equalizer, Clydesdale, equalizer in what I call a good lane, and it's paying dividends. Look at this. And the, the Clydesdale made a good run. The equalizer just, just had him covered. He takes the win easily here over Bennett Clark and Clydesdale. Bennett Clark obviously a little upset about that run. And here comes our next two trucks on the line. It's Gary Wiggins and Mopar Magic up against the Carolina Crusher. Well, there's pressure on the Carolina Crusher because we've explained he's number two in points. He has to keep doing what the equalizer does. The equalizer has a found. He picked up points for this round. Now the Crusher must do the same thing just to stay even. Meanwhile, the Mopar Magic is going to try to put him away. Porter is in the bad lane. Let's see if he can pull off the first win. The Carolina Crusher as he advances to the next round with that Chevrolet. Out of the bad lane and back into the pits. I have no idea what's going on, but Porter's got some kind of problem with that truck. Rod Litzow going over to look at his wrecked USA number one Chevrolet. Back on the line we go. The next pairing, Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger up against the Buffalo Tremor and Johnny K. The kid in the red truck out of New York. He's on a roll. He's a rookie. He draws the old KG Ventures with a big, bad red lights out of Virginia. They call it the Grave Digger. The rookie going against the old pro. The crowd's favorite. Everybody's going to be on their feet. Who's going to take the win? Look at the Grave Digger. Right way once again. Night, Butch. And another win out of the right lane for the Grave Digger and Dennis Anderson. Let's go down to Army with Dennis right now. Well, Dennis Anderson's still in the middle of this thing in Flint, Michigan. Change your driver style and you're staying alive. Yeah, well, we slowed down a little bit coming off the line. I think that's helping a lot. That last pass, I had some popping in the motor. I think it's cool. The, you know, we've had a cold front come in. I think my motor might be leaning out on me now. I don't know what the deal was, but it was popping back. And if it does that in the next round, I might not be in. Yeah, we heard the popping ourselves. It sounds like it could be a fuel problem. What will you do, go back and fatten the engine up? Yeah. Now, I don't know. What I, what I need to do is I go back and ask the crew, you know, if, if it looked like it was fueling out of the pipes or what the deal was. It could be in the fire, too. It might be my, uh, my kill switch might be short now. Thanks, Army. A wild quarterfinal round is complete, and when we come back, the semifinal and championship races are on the line on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. We'll be right back. Power Tracks and the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge is brought to you by TNT Motorsports, the nation's leader in pulling and the monster truck racing.
Welcome back to Power Tracks here on ESPN, the Renegades TNT Monster Truck Challenge. I'm Butch Krieger along with Army Armstrong. We're going into semi-final round action. It's the equalizer of David Morris up against the nightlife Chevrolet machine of Dave Wysorek. Wysorek, Sean, he can play tough, but he has to play tough out of the left lane. That'll be a down call for him. The up call in the right lane, the equalizer, needs to be a, again on a roll. This kid's looking awfully smooth. But he makes it look easy. No problem at all, and check it out, Army, another right lane win right there. So David Morris and the equalizer advances to the championship round. The number two man in points, Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher. The pressure's on him right now as he brings the Chevrolet machine to the starting line. Army, ask Gary about this last outdoor event of the year and the big question, can he catch the equalizer? Well, I think everybody will be pushing the trucks to the limit on this outdoor course. Everybody's been outdoors a long time and sort of got used to it, and they'll be pushing the trucks to the limit. Well, what do you feel about the final three events of the year going indoors after chasing these points so long outdoors, and you're currently number two in the points chase? How's it going to affect you if you go back indoors? Well, the way it is right now, if I'm going to win the points, I'm going to have to push the truck to the limit wherever I'm outdoors, indoors, or anywhere. I'm going to have to push the truck to the limit to try to beat Equalizer. Back on the starting line. Here we go. Gary Porter and the Carolina Crusher up against Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger Army. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to kick back and watch these two bad boys play war right now. Out of the gate. Oh, a tremendous bounce there for Carolina Crusher. Bad bounce for Porter. Disqualify him. Grave Digger goes to the final for the first time in a long time, Butch. You better believe it. And so I know Dennis Anderson's got to be happy after that run. A little bit of smoke out of the grave digger and a lot of water coming out of the Carolina Crusher. Let's check the replay out. As you can see, Gary Porter completely misses the second set of cars. Let's go down to Army Armstrong and Gary and find out what happened on that run. I knew I would have to push my truck to the limb and I started off in second gear and I got a good hole shot on him and I come off that first set of cars, which is the bad lane, and my truck took a real bad bounce and I missed the second set completely. Well, one bounce in this ball game can cost thousands of dollars, can it? It does, and it did that time. So we go now to final round action. It will be Dennis Anderson's Grave Digger up against the current point leader, David Morrison, the equalizer out of Springfield, Tennessee. Butch, in the last interview, one of the drivers finally mentioned there is a good lane and a bad lane. Now we've got another problem coming in handy. You notice the Grave Digger comes out. The right side of the engine looks sick. A little bit of blue smoke. They call it death smoke. I'll be coming out of that right bank of that supercharged Chevrolet engine. He goes to the right lane. Look at the lane choice. Equalizer head choice goes to the lane that we figure will be the bad lane. Another case of just sitting and watching, Bush Trigger. Who's it going to be? Dennis Anderson, the Grave Digger, or the Equalizer, and David Morris. They're both set on the starting line. Watch the green light. They're out of there. And they're on their way. Anderson with a quick start out of the gate. But here comes Morris on the left side. Who's going to take the win? A lot of smoke out of the Grave Digger. We don't know who won. It's awful close. We go back and look at the timing camera. Yes, Equalizer takes the win. Grave Digger disqualified, and it cost him about a $30,000 engine, Butch. Let's go down to Dennis Anderson and Dave Morris with Army Armstrong. You know, I'm out here to, to turn the crowd on, and we've had a lot of problems with the truck. We started out tonight. It was running fine. We don't know. We just picked up a problem during the night. I don't know if it's fire fuel. We're going to work on tonight and get it ready. So... You know, I lost all my power right there at the end of the track for the last three runs, and it almost cost me a race the last one it did, so we're going to go back and get everything together. Maybe we can come back out and thump these guys. David Morris, is, is this one as sweet as the first one, the victory? Yeah, maybe even sweeter. I don't know. Uh, I had to swap lanes that time. I wasn't sure what was going to happen, but it, it all worked out well. The truck ran good. Everything worked fine. Am I talking to the this year's national champion right now? Yeah, you are. 88 was great, but 89 is mine. Thanks, Army. David Morris sounds super confident about taking all the wins on the 1989 TNT Monster Truck Challenge. For Army Armstrong, I'm Butch Krieger. Thanks for joining us on Power Tracks and the Total.